Today I'm going to present about uh, cross-origin state inference attacks, or COSI attacks in short. This is a joint work with uh, Sohail Kodayari and Professor Juan Caballero. So let's see what are COSI attacks. So in COSI attacks, a malicious uh, website infers the state of a user at another website. Let's see an example. Let's imagine uh, user Alice, who is playing the role of the victim here. Alice has a web browser, and uh, Alice is a reviewer for a conference named Foo, which is hosted at uh, hotcrp.com. Alice has been assigned some papers to review, and uh, there are paper identifiers for them, and uh, she's in the process of reviewing them. Now let's consider the attacker, uh, Alice, uh, whose goal is to actually use COSI attacks to uh, infer whether Alice is the reviewer of one of the papers that Malice submitted. So in order to perform a COSI attack, uh, the attacker need to load a malicious page in Alice's web browser. So in order to do that, uh, here Malice is actually uh, trying to um, like create an email address that looks like the PC chair and like telling Alice like, hey, like you know, uh, please like you know, uh, click this link to confirm your reviews for uh, FooConf. So when Alice clicks on the link, the malicious site, which is actually controlled by Malice, is loaded at Alice's web browser, and uh, using COSI attack, uh, the malicious site can infer the state of Alice at uh, foo.hotcrp.com. So, uh, what does it mean by inferring uh, states? Uh, first, let's see a simplified representation of the attack. So, there is Alice, web browser, and the two websites. So, during the time of the COSI attack, uh, Alice can be in different states uh, at hotcrp.com. For instance, uh, Alice can be logged in at hotcrp.com or not. This is the login state. And then there is the account state, account type state. So Alice can be logged in at a reviewer account or an author account uh, or the admin account. Then the content ownership state, which says whether Alice has access to the reviews of a specific paper number or not. Similarly, uh, there is the account ownership state, which actually tells whether Alice is the owner of a specific user account, which is identified by like an identifier like user 217 or something like that and the other state, which is actually the Alice does, it does not own that account. So uh, in a COSI attack, uh, the attacker's goal uh, is to infer these kind of state information uh, from the target website. And uh, given that uh, this is about inferring different types of state from uh, websites, COSI attacks have been known uh, by different names in the past. For instance, the attacks which are based on login detection were called uh, like login detection attacks or log login oracle attacks. And uh, the attack on account ownership where the malicious site checks whether Alice is the owner of uh, another account at another website, these attacks were commonly referred to as de-anonymization attacks. So in order to uh, understand or mount uh, COSI attacks, you need to understand two concepts. The first concept is that of uh, state-dependent URLs. So these are URLs that uh, return uh, different responses depending on the requesting browser's state. So let's consider this URL, uh, which is hosted at uh, foo.hotcrp.com, and it is actually calling an API to fetch the reviews of paper number uh, 278. So if this URL is accessed uh, when, uh, by someone who is actually logged in at HotCRP and is actually having an account of reviewer type and is actually the reviewer of that paper, then a 200 response code is received. And if the URL, same URL is accessed by someone who is logged in and is a reviewer but not the reviewer of the paper, then a 403 response is received. So this means, uh, if the malicious site uh, sends a request to this specific URL, then a state-dependent uh, response is uh, received. So if uh, one thing to notice here is that uh, the, the malicious site and uh, the requested URL uh, lies on two different origins. So if the uh, malicious site directly tries to send this request and try to read the response, the same origin policy of the browser will actually prevent this from happening. So how can the attacker still mount the attack? This is where the second concept comes into play. The second, it is that of cross-site leaks. 
So uh, cross-site leaks are browser-side channels for inferring uh, the responses of cross-origin requests. The many uh, different types of cross-site leaks have been proposed in the past. Uh, the details are in the paper. We will uh, look at uh, the first one, that is events-fired cross-site leak. So in the events-fired cross-site leak, uh, the malicious website actually uh, embeds um, an HTML tag pointing to the state-dependent URL and makes use of the uh, page-level events like uh, onload and uh, on error in this case. So in this case, the embed HTML tag is used. And the onload event is pointing to a reviewer function, and the on error event is pointing to a not reviewer function. So uh, when uh, this, uh, th this tag is actually included in the malicious page, the browser will automatically send a request to this URL. So uh, yeah, let's consider the first case where the, uh, Alice is actually the reviewer of the paper. So in this case, the 200 response is received. And as a consequence of this, the onload event is actually triggered and the reviewer function is called. So in this way, the malicious site can know that Alice is actually the reviewer of the paper. And the second case, uh, the 403 response is received and uh, the not reviewer function is actually triggered in the page. Uh, so there are some challenges uh, in order to perform these attacks. So the first challenge is that uh, sometimes uh, multiple states can give the same response. So for instance, let's consider what happens in the logged out state. So if a user is logged out and accesses the same URL, then the same response code is received as that of the, uh, when Alice is actually a reviewer of the paper. So what can happen is that uh, when actually the malicious site sends this request, uh, then in both the first case where Alice is actually the reviewer of the paper, and when Alice is actually logged out of hot CRP, the onload event can trigger and the attacker can actually like you know confuse Alice to be the reviewer when she's actually logged out and not the reviewer of the paper. Uh, the next challenge is that uh, the same uh, attack payload uh, can behave differently on different browsers. For instance, uh, the attack payload that I showed earlier that uses the embed tag, this is, this, be, this is applicable only for Firefox and Microsoft Edge. So this behavior does not happen for Google Chrome. And remember that uh, the attacker cannot control which user the browser will use, so the attacker needs to be prepared for different types of browsers. So in order to perform the same attack, uh, in order to have the same attack also in Chrome, the attacker needs to find an equivalent attack vector. So in this case, the attacker uses the link tag, uh, which, works, uh, which, which works similar to the uh, embed tag in uh, Firefox and Edge. Uh, so, uh, as you can see, in order to mount a COSI attack, you need to have, uh, you need to, there are many different concepts and uh, complexities. So, motivated from all this, we introduced the concept of attack classes. So, an attack class has a name. Uh, the details of the uh, different types of responses, uh, it can actually differentiate. And then uh, the access leak, which is actually used in it. And then the details about uh, the browser support. For instance, the EF uh, status error um, script, yeah, status error script uh, is an attack class that we uh, defined, which actually helps differentiate between 200 JavaScript response and uh, 400 and 500 responses. It uses the script tag and the onload and on error uh, event, uh, event handlers, and it is actually supported in all uh, all the three web browsers. So uh, we. Uh, were able to identify a lot of these attack classes. Uh, precisely, we were, identif we were able to identify 40 different attack classes, and 21 of them are actually new, new attack classes, meaning that they were not discussed previously in the literature. And one of them actually uses a completely novel access leak that we identified. So this is actually use is abusing the post message API in the web browsers. So let's see how this actually works. So uh, in this uh, attack class, um, it actually works when there is a state-dependent uh, state, uh, state URL that has the following property. So in, when the user is in state A, uh, the URL actually returns a response that broadcasts the message X. And when the user is in actually state B, then the broadcast message is actually Y. So uh, the malicious site can actually open uh, the state-dependent URL uh, in a new uh, window. And then uh, the, since there is the broadcast message, and here we assume that uh, the use Alice is actually in state A, uh, the st uh, that message is actually received by the, 
that message is actually received by the malicious site, and thereby the malicious site can know that uh, Alice is actually in state A. So uh, there are a lot of related work on uh, COSI attacks, uh, but uh, if you get into the details of them, uh, you will see that um, uh, they have been always called by different names based on the states that uh, they were trying to infer. And then there is not so much discussion on um, uh, on the uh, on the uh, need to uh, like have multiple browser support and uh, the need to combine different states, and uh, then there is also um, uh, not much uh, discussion on how to automatically identify these COSI attacks and how to automatically build uh, attack pages for performing these attacks. So our contributions are in this uh, in this regard. So we present COSI attacks as a comprehensive category. Uh, we introduce the concept of COSI attack classes. We identify a new cross-site leak, which is based on the post message API. And then we present Basta COSI, which is a tool to automatically identify COSI attack uh, on a website and automatically build uh, complex attack pages. Using our tool, we tested four standalone web applications and 58 top websites from the Alexa top 150, and we discovered COSI attacks on all of them. So now let's uh, move to the approach where I will explain you the architecture of the tool. So as the input to the tool, the tester actually provides uh, Selenium scripts uh, th that can be used to automatically load a specific state at the user's browser. Then there is a, log, a URL data collection module which actually crawls the web application to identify state-dependent URLs. Then there is an attack vector identification module which actually uh, identifies the attack vectors for each of the state-dependent URLs. Then there is an attack page generation module uh, which actually uh, combines uh, different attack vectors in order to create automatically create uh, attack pages. And the output of the tool is actually uh, attack pages. So uh, we performed, as I said earlier, uh, we tested four standalone web applications and 58 websites from the top Alexa that supports account creation. And we found uh, attacks on all the tested websites. We responsibly disclosed the uh, attacks. And then as vulnerabilities, some vulnerabilities were com confirmed by the vendors. And some of them are already fixed. And we also received bug bounties for some of them. So let's see some, uh, some of the details. So in hot CRP, we identified that uh, an attacker can actually de-anonymize the reviewer of a paper. Uh, and in uh, Blogger and Google Drive, uh, we identified that an attacker can actually de-anonymize the author of a blog or the owner of a specific file. And in Pornhub, uh, the, for Pornhub, the attacker can actually de-anonymize the owner of a specific Pornhub channel. Then in IMDB, Imgur, and uh, LinkedIn, uh, the malicious site can actually de-anonymize the user. And in GitHub and GitLab, uh, the malicious site can actually de-anonymize users and identify their roles, like maintainer or developer or guest. Uh, we performed all these uh, experiments ethically on the uh, accounts that we control. So we did not try to um, disc uh, uh, like leak any information that we do not control. And what about the defenses for COSI attacks? So the first type of defenses are for websites. So these are actually defenses that websites can implement to prevent COSI attacks. So the most prominent among them uh, are same site cookies. So using same site cookies, uh, the website can actually control the automatic sending of uh, cookies in a third party context. Uh, this is getting popular. Uh, then there are other uh, types of header-based defenses like cross-origin resource policy, fetch metadata, and cross-origin op opener policy. The details are available in our paper. Then there are browser-based defenses. Uh, as I said earlier, uh, uh, same-site cookies are getting popular because, as you must have already heard, the major browsers are uh, trying to enforce a default same-site policy. And uh, interestingly, uh, Tor browser has had been has been behaving as if it has the same site lax policy enforced which meaning which means that it does not send cookies in a third party context and this actually prevents a lot of um, uh, cozy attacks and uh, we found out that uh, this does not uh, prevent all types of uh, attack classes for instance the win window based attacks are still uh, exploitable in tor browser and then we reported this to Tor, and they are planning to fix this issue. 
So moving on to the conclusions, so we present COSI attacks as a comprehensive category. We introduce the concept of COSI attack classes. We identify a new cross-site leak which is based on the post message API. And we present a tool, Basta COSI, which can automatically identify COSI attacks and build complex attack payloads, attack pages. And then we test four standalone web applications and test 58 uh, top websites, finding COSI attacks on all of them. Thank you. Any questions from the audience? Okay, I see someone brave coming up. Hey, I have one quick question. When you said you could de-anonymize a user, like what did that mean particularly? So uh, what this means is that uh, suppose you are logged in at, uh, suppose you are a famous person, and then you are visiting a website which is actually kind of inappropriate, and then the website can actually check uh, whether the visitor is actually this specific LinkedIn user. So in this way, like even though this you are visiting a shady website, uh, like you know without creating an account or through an anonymous uh, like you know account, the website can actually know through the other website in which you are logged in that you are this specific uh, user. So this is what uh, is called by de-anonymization. Okay, thank you. Okay, so I have a question. Um, so you presented a number of defenses. Yeah. Uh, can you elaborate? Like, do you need all of these? Do you need some of these in order to be secure? Like, is is a properly set same site policy enough to get rid of all of these attacks? So, um, uh, like, it's. Uh, I mean, for example, same site poli uh, same site cookies. They can prevent uh, a lot of attacks. But uh, as I showed, um, it, the, the same site cookies have different modes. So uh, the lax mode was actually kind of used in Tor, but it could not prevent the window-based attacks. And in order to prevent the window-based attack, you need to use the cross-origin opener policy defense. So these are kind of like new defenses. So it, this is actually a confusing topic, like which like defense prevents which one. Okay. So you need kind of like a, sometimes a combination of them to prevent all of them. Okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. So the, let's thank the speaker once again. Yeah.